Hello and welcome back to She Walks, She Paints. Thank you for joining me again on another episode. And if you have been liking, commenting or subscribing to my channel, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate the support and it's really helped me grow my channel and keep doing what I love doing and sharing it with you. As you might be able to hear, I've got a bit of company today. We've come out to the countryside and it's another evening walk. It's a little bit breezy, but that's actually really nice because it's keeping us cool. So hopefully it's going to be a really nice day. We've come back to a place in Fife that I really love. So we're back on the Falkland estate and we're going to do another hill, which is called West Lomond and we're going to be doing a really interesting route which is up past the Bunnett Stain. For those of you who don't speak Scots, that's basically a stone that's shaped like a hat. Um, but in my opinion it's shaped a bit more like a mushroom, so let me know what you think when we get there. But we'll head off now and see what we can find today. This small man-made cave is called the Maiden's Bower. A local story goes that many years ago, a young maiden fell in love with the son of a rival family, and this rock was their meeting spot. One day, she saw her father's men ambush and kill the young man, after which she refused to return home, spending the remainder of her life in the cave and becoming known locally as a saint.
There are several romantic explanations for the bunnet stain's otherworldly appearance, such as a Pictish king's tombstone or a druid's altar. However, the bizarre shape was formed entirely by natural erosion of this exposed outcrop of rock. Going. We're going this way. Come on then, let's go.
522 metres, West Lomond Hill is the highest point in Fife. It was once the location for an Iron Age hill fort. Its panoramic views of the area would have helped to give the occupants early warning of any approaching enemies. Going back even further in time, the summit of West Lomond was also occupied by a large prehistoric burial cairn, probably constructed during the Neolithic or Bronze Age periods. So it's just on our way back down the other side of the hill so we've got a bit of a further walk to get back to the car this way but it's a really nice walk and there's plenty more stuff to see a really interesting landscape see all the the rocks and the red dust behind me kind of looks like a desert just completely unexpected so it's pretty cool i was wondering on the climb why i felt so tired and just really unfit but then i remembered that i'd given blood yesterday so i'm down a pint of blood and um, which does explain that so fortunately it's not a long walk um, and I'm feeling all right and I've got plenty of snacks, so we'll keep going. We're going this way. This way, come on. This way.
Okay. We've walked here a few times but we've always taken a different path and we didn't know this was here just beneath our feet so this is a really cool discovery. This natural rock formation is known as John Knox's pulpit, supposedly the location for a sermon by 16th century Scottish minister and theologian John Knox. He was a leader of Scotland's Protestant Reformation in the 16th century and the founder of the Presbyterian Church of Scotland, renowned for preaching inflammatory sermons all over Scotland and inciting rebellions against the Catholic monarch Mary Queen of Scots. Despite the name, John Knox is never known to have preached from this location. However, the valley here is a naturally hidden amphitheatre where Presbyterian Covenanters held secretive church services during the Killing Time, a period in the late 17th century when they were in violent conflict with the Crown. now we're just heading back through this little woodland and then we'll be back on the road to walk back to the car I really loved that today it was such a nice walk despite being so windy at the top and it just goes to show that even on a really familiar route we've done this loads of times and there's still things to discover like that beautiful waterfall in the in the gully it was so cool I felt like it was something out of Jurassic Park or something <laughs> we'll head back now along the road I'll let you skip that bit and I will see you back in the studio where you can find out what I choose to paint from today
these transparent wings will be the lightest part of the finished painting, so as always, I start with a light wash of colour to that area. I like to try and get the eye right early on in a painting like this. It brings the subject to life and helps me see how the finished piece will look. I know these lines seem very dark now, but once the black tones of the bee's body are done later on, they won't look as stark. The red-tailed bumblebee is one of the most common types in the UK. I think this one was a queen because it was so large. Worker bees also have that distinctive red tail, but are much smaller, and a male would have had yellow markings. I use tiny feathery strokes to create a furry texture on the page. I always find it helpful to practice on a scrap piece of paper first to get the technique right. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Here I'm using a combination of watered down colour and pigment straight from the pen to capture the darkness of the bee's fear. At this stage, I'm usually making lots of small adjustments all over the painting, deepening shadows or adding more colour where needed. If you enjoyed this video and want to support my channel, there are lots of ways you can do this. You can like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram for free. You can buy a print from my Etsy store, or you can donate the cost of a coffee on Ko-fi. Links to all my pages are in the video description below.